Okay, so this is an example of the birthday problem. Hopefully you recall uh, the birthday problem is an example or a, a problem where we have a bunch of people in a room and then according to these specific conditions, so equal probabilities of being born on each day, um, et cetera, et cetera, we, we need a surprisingly low amount of people for the probability of at least one match, where a match is defined as multiple people being born on the same day, um, for the probability of a match to be uh, greater than 50%. So the the result that sticks in people's heads is that for 23 people in these conditions, the probability of at least one birthday match is over 50%, and that number increases from there. You know, by the time we get to 100, it's 100 people is essentially 100%. Uh, it's very close to 100% probability of a match. Um, obviously, a pretty unintuitive problem, right? Like 23, here we have a 365-day calendar. 23 people doesn't really come close to covering that calendar. Why would that probability of a match be so high? Um, and I think the intuition is is way easier if you think about pairs of people. So there are 23 people, but there are 23 choose two pairs. That's uh, something over 250. Um, so when you think of, in terms of that, like 250 pa possible pairs of people, it seems to fill up the, the calendar much more and, and make more sense. Um, of course, like intuition is great, but you could always, the best thing you can always do is, is simulate something and actually do it yourself, but not all of us can sort of generate random people in our lives at our disposal. You know, you might know like 50 people, so you play the game once and then you're done, but you want to play it a bunch of times to kind of get the hang of it, and that's just not feasible in real life for most of us. Um, so instead, we, we use a computer and we simulate uh, sort of over and over for us to get a hang of it. Um, so here on the right, we have this, this calendar. Um, the days are kind of separated by these dotted red lines. Uh, I didn't do this really, you know, 12 month thing. I just did day one, day two, day three, et cetera, all the way to day 365. Um, and then this left, this left hand panel is going to kind of dictate the number of babies, number of birthdays that we kind of add to this calendar. So um, when I hit play, it's going to add babies one by one to the calendar, and then we'll see when we get a match and we'll stop then. Um, the, right now we're at one baby and there's one birthday on the calendar, so there's one person born in, on this day. So we're going to go and we're going to stop and debrief when we hit uh, a match. So here we're adding you know, birthdays randomly. We're going, going, going. Oh, and we got a match. Nice. That was pretty quick. Um, so you can see two people born on this day. Uh, and the nice thing about this panel over here is that it tells us in general the probability of at least one birthday match for this number of people. So we had 13 people down probability of at least one birthday match. Still pretty low, you know, still 20%, so that was a, a rare event. Let's let it run a little bit more and see if we get another match anytime soon. Um, so still going, and we got then we got another match, there's another match, uh, we keep going, you know, we can hit pause and hit reset. To, to reset generates new birthdays, it generates a new birthday vector. Um, then we can, you know, watch it again, let's see if we get early birthdays again. So here we're up to 13, which we didn't make it past last time, still no matches. Um, and this is, you know, just to, you can run it a couple times. There, we get a we get a match. So I was a little bit late and hit oh, two matches. A little bit late in hitting it. It looked like we hit it around 25 people. Um, and again, you know, for 28 people, 65% chance of, of at least one match. Um, so that's the idea. You can kind of run it yourself a bunch of times and, and see how it works. Um, I think it's interesting to drag to extremes. Let's drag to 182, for example. Um, and you can see, you know, it's a ton of matches, right? There's a day where three people are born on the same day. Um, and the probability is extremely high that there's at least one match. Key to note, though, is that the probability is not one. It's greater than, it's, you know, it's very high. It's greater than 0.999, but it's not quite one. And even as we go all the way up to 365, let's see if I can get up 365 on the dot. There, 365. So, you know, we're going to see it takes a little while to upload because that's to draw everything. But you can already start to see, you know, here's a day where we have four birthdays, another day where we have four birthdays. Um, it might take a little bit. Um, let's see, yeah, well, you know, there's, I think I saw, there's a five birthday day, five people were born on this day, but there's still not quite a probability one of a match. It probably is very high, right? It's well over this number, 0 0.999. It's probably, you know, over 0.9999. It's, it's very high, but it's not one because it's possible that with 365 people, you know, there's a person born here, a person born here, and one person born on each day. So this, this entire calendar is filled with ones. It's extremely unlikely, but it is possible. And the only way you can get a probability of one, 100% of a birthday match, is if you increment uh, to 366, 
or higher. So when you have more birthdays than the number of days, now there's a 100% chance of a match because there's just too many people for the number of days. So if you, even if you put them all down in their separate days, uh, you, you have to put someone else down and you'll get a match. Um, so the example of the birthday problem uh, helps you kind of play with the birthday problem, generate birthdays, and sort of see how this astounding result actually comes into action.